Nick, uh, we survived another year. It's our special holiday episode. Uh, this is one of my favorite times of the year when when I get to ask you for your predictions for all the federal parties uh, and what you think will happen in the next year. Uh, so let's get right down to it. Uh, first, the Liberal Party. Uh, they've kind of had a, a wild year uh, with the Freedom Convoy. Uh, what what have you made of this previous year and, and, and what do you see going ahead? Well, you know what? It's it's another year that the Liberals were not able to advance their agenda. You know what? Let's face it. Since Justin Trudeau has been prime minister, he'd probably argue that he hasn't been able to do what he wants to do. First of all, there was Donald Trump, right? Mm -hmm. Then there was the pandemic. Then there was the Freedom Convoy. It's kind of like, you know, there's like any there's I, I don't want to use the word excuse, but there is a reason why the liberals have not been able to to deliver and focus on their agenda because there are other events massive events that have overtaken them but two words i think so so they've been kind of probably want to get try to get back on the uh on a liberal agenda and try to deliver some things because you know TikTok the 2025 is coming but two words in terms of the prediction for 2023 for the liberals Hunger Games, Michael. Hunger oh, wow. Games, right? Mm. And this is going to have to do with speculation as to whether Justin Trudeau stays on as the leader of the Liberal Party, mm. jockeying within cabinet and caucus amongst different contenders uh, for the job. And people will be reading entrails, like they'll be they'll be watching. You know, like if Justin Trudeau goes out on a snowy night, like the the like his dad did, mm. and you know, if he just tries to toy with journalists like, you know, that we'll we'll be seeing that kind of stuff. But I think in I think in 2023, the big the big question will be liberal leadership. Does Justin Trudeau still have the fire in his belly to continue and fight another election? And he has said he wants to be on. He wants to stay on board. But he has to say that because he can't be a lame duck, lame duck leader and a lame duck prime minister. So he's got to say, hey, I'm sticking around for the next election. But people, I think, will be. Uh, putting him under the microscope, watching and listening to everything that he says and does to see if there are any signals as to his future staying on as the leader mm. of the Liberal Party or perhaps uh, perhaps not staying on. So and it'll be it'll be folks kind of uh, very awkwardly shuffling around and positioning <laughs> while still uh, positioning themselves for a leadership bid while still uh, being loyal mm. to to Justin Trudeau. Uh, Nick, I, I don't mean to. Well, I, I guess I do mean to put you on the spot. But but are there any uh, names uh, that you can think of who might be waiting in the wings that they might might be a potential uh, new leader? Well, there's you know the Christian Freeland obviously has to be a, a top contender. Um, I, I think Christian Freeland has now become kind of the new CD Howe, the Minister of Everything. Right? Mm -hmm. She's uh, she's the Minister of Finance, which is a top portfolio that uh, really drives the government agenda and makes sure things uh, happens and is, is funded and is well organized. But she, you know, she's also still involved in uh, foreign policy and still speaks on, on other issues and has been a real uh, loyalist uh, to, uh, to Justin Trudeau. Mm. Uh, Champagne would be another uh, key contender. Uh, he's uh, performed well in his portfolio. Uh, more corporate and uh, business-like would probably be, as opposed to, I, I won't call him a, a super progressive. He mm -hmm. is a progressive, absolutely, but uh, a little more, uh, a little more focused on economic issues. Um, he would be, he would be a key contender. Melanie Jolie, his name comes up, uh, comes up a lot. Uh, she was actually critical. She's been rewarded with cabinet posts because of her, uh, uh, because of, Politically, the service that she's done to the Liberal Party in the in the in the Quebec and, and Montreal region has really helped the Liberals in the last election, last couple of elections, especially. So, so that you know, those are the top names, and who knows whether there could be a, an outsider. Mm -hmm. uh, names like uh, Mark Carney, the yeah. former governor. Why don't we just the former governor of the Bank of Canada, the former governor of the Bank of England? You know, his name uh, his name peri periodically comes up. But uh, you know, so there are people within the cabinet. Uh, that are contenders and perhaps even some uh, some outsiders right now. 
Uh, let's go over to the NDP who are in a in a deal with the Liberals. So they'll ostensibly support the Liberals until 2025, I believe. Uh, how are things looking for uh, the new Democrats in, in the year ahead? Well, you know what? In 2022, wasn't that bad for them? You know, that in the in you know the tracking there, they you know in the Nanos weekly tracking, they would periodically have support with a two. That's the first number, mm. and that's usually good news for the New Democrats and bad news for the uh, for the Liberals. Out social good news for the Conservatives because of vote splits. So there have been some glimmers uh, throughout 2022, but I think the the existential question for the New Democrats will be supporting and propping up the Liberals. And let's face it, something will happen in the government that will be bad news. Mm -hmm. It will become an existential threat to the parliamentary coalition between the uh, New Democrats and the Liberals. And, you know, and I think that'll put that'll put a big strain on the relationship and could potentially even uh, create some sort of, uh, what do we call it, uncertainty in the House of Commons. So I think the, uh, you know, for the NDP, the prediction is going to be, what else are you going to ask? Because they've got their dental plan. What else are they going to ask as part of the agreement with the with the Liberals? And then how are they going to weather the storm that will happen at some point? Because mm -hmm. stuff always happens. How are they going to weather the next crisis that might not look well on the Liberals with the new Democrats looking like the party that is propping up uh, a government that is going through turbulence in 2023 or hits some sort of turbulence in 2023? Uh, Nick, the Conservatives have a new leader in Pierre Polyev. It's been a big year for them. Uh, how are they? How are how do they stand uh, going into the year twenty twenty three? Well, they're competitive with the with the Liberals, uh, which is good, uh, and they maintain their competitiveness as they have. You know, let's face it, the Conservatives actually, if if we were a a democracy that was not a first past the post, but just a ba basically straight up. They received more votes in the last two elections than the Liberals. So in some democracies, they would have formed a government. They would have had the chance to form a government, but not in Canada because of our first past the post system, because they won fewer seats uh, in the in the House of Commons. So so they're well positioned right now. Um, my prediction for the Conservatives is the big focus will be uh, one word hyphenated, ka-ching. <laughs> Kaching, kaching, kaching. I think the I think the focus, my prediction for the Conservatives is that in 2023, their big focus will be to fundraise, to build organization, to build new machinery for the uh for the election. Mm -hmm. And uh don't underestimate Pierre Poiliev. You know, he's excellent at communicating, but he also knows what needs to be done to win elections. And uh, I don't think he's going to, uh, why don't we say, I, I predict that he will not put on a sweater. You know what I mean? Like, you remember when Stephen <laughs> yeah. Harper put on the sweater? Yeah, I remember the Harper a, sweater, yeah. Want to be a nice guy? He's not mm -hmm. going to put on a sweater in 2023. So, and uh, because 2023 will be about raising funds. What does that mean? That means that Pierre Poiliev will continue to attack the media, will continue to attack, obviously, the liberals and our institutions, such as the mm -hmm. Bank of Canada, um, and he will use those attacks to be red meat to core conservatives, to open up their wallets, to build the war chest so that Pierre Poiliev can have all the resources at his disposal to challenge the uh, the federal liberals. So they're going to be they're, they're, the, the conservatives in 2023, I believe, will be very focused on fundraising. They will be very aggressive on communications and uh, on some of those issues, populist style issues that are very good at fundraising and resonates with with a certain uh, proportion of, of voters. And then uh, the sweater won't come out, out until maybe 2024 or 2025 <laughs> right. when the uh, the election might happen. It might even have like an Argyle, uh, Argyle better? Oh, well, like a Charlie Brown. Kind know, of thing. Yeah. 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 So, uh, but uh, I just think uh, 2023 will be... Uh, will be for the conservatives about raising money and building uh building a modern party with the uh resources at its disposal and to be ready to take on the liberals and to try to win the win mm -hmm. the next federal election 
We'll have to start a new segment called Sweater Watch. Just a Sweater Watch for, yeah. <laughs> for an election. Yep. Uh, so the uh, Bloc Québécois under Yves Blanchet, they've, they've been not making too many headlines lately. I, I, I think uh, they were speaking out against uh, against the monarchy uh, last I heard. Where, where do they stand going into 2023? Well, their their support um, their support is 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 still pretty strong in the province of Quebec, uh, and has been steady over the last uh, over the last while. Uh, their key player, I, th- I think, for for the Bloc. Um, they'll be looking at the province, provincial, the, the provincial government and the CAC Lego, um, mm-hmm. and what they and what the provincial government does, and to look to align. You know what? The, the interesting thing in Quebec is uh, Lego is such a massive presence. He had such a, a big win in the last provincial election. It's really for all of the federal parties, especially the Bloc Québécois. And also for the conservatives, especially for those two, they're trying to cozy up and align with the CAC party provincially, in order to tap in to that rand and those voters that uh, Lego has mobilized. So uh, expect uh, Yves Blanchet, who's been very competent. Um, he's done an excellent job. He did an excellent job in the in the uh, most recent election. Mm-hmm. Um, expect him to kind of continue to be laser-like focused on advancing Quebec issues and also focused on trying to hold on to as many seats as he can come the next election. Uh, Nick, probably the federal party that, that's had the, the the most difficulties over the past year, I, I think it's safe to say, is, is the Green Party. Uh, and now they have new co-leaders, uh, a familiar face on Elizabeth May and former journalist and human rights activist uh, Jonathan Pedno. Uh, where, where do they stand going into the new year? Well, you know, the, the Green Party is is basically, uh, you know, in the poll, factoring the margin of error, they basically are where they were um, in the last uh, last federal election. So no big, no big breakthrough for them, but they've had a rough time. Like mm. 2023, I'm sure they want to erase that year <laughs> as much as they can. So... Um, the other thing that's interesting is that the the proportion of Canadians that would consider voting NDP when we look at the long term trend line is a little below average, and I think a lot of this has to do with divisions within the party. So I think for Elizabeth May and Jonathan Pedno, the new co leaders uh, of the and you know what in Germany the the Greens have co leaders too, right? So mm-hmm. this isn't a, a new thing; it kind of uh, falls within the Green tradition. Um, so expect. Uh, Expect the Green Party, I think, in 2023 to focus on unity at the beginning and then to position itself to take advantage of environmental issues. Because you know what? The environment is still a top tier issue that Canadians are worried about. Yeah, they're worried about paying the bills. Yeah, they're worried about whether they can uh, access a doctor or get into an emergency room. But the environment is still a top tier issue. So expect the Greens to focus on unity in uh, 2023. And then to put out a renewed vision. And I think this is where, you know, Elizabeth May, if it's the same as it was before, I'm not sure that's going to work. I think she has to take advantage of the fact that she now has a co-leader to kind of explain how this is different, to Mm -hmm. explain kind of how the new green agenda is enhanced uh, and, you know, where she wants to take the party. And, you know, you have to remember, you know, uh, there are a lot of progressive voters that like the Liberals, the Greens, and the New Democrats, she's got to position the Green Party within that universe uh, in order to uh, in order to make some sort of breakthrough. Hmm. Uh, Nick, that's it for uh, for this special holiday episode and, and the last one for 2022. So uh, I just want to wish you happy holidays and all of our viewers and listeners, and, and I will see you again in January. Sounds good, Michael. 